standing with me is a gentleman that I have known for about four years, but I've never met him until today. He is Brian Clark, probably better known as copy blogger to everybody else. Brian, hey man, it's finally a pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you too, man. <laughs> Content marketing has changed over the years. You've been around it from the, around the beginning. But from a standpoint of small businesses and content marketing, what are some of the challenges they face today that maybe they didn't have to face a couple years ago? Well, I think it's challenging for the small business. I mean, uh, you're starting to see for the last couple of years at the enterprise level, everyone's all in on content. We built our entire business out of content, no advertising, no VC money, anything like that. So it works. Um, and I built a couple of businesses before, you know, real estate brokerage, all that kind of stuff, professional services. These are the people that can benefit from content the most, but they don't have any time, you know, they don't have the bandwidth. And uh, I was addressing this issue recently with someone, you know, who's a sole proprietor running a business, and I'm like, you know, you gotta, it's gotta be a shift in budget. If, you're, if you've got a budget in advertising or marketing, then you gotta shift that over into content creation. And you, the small business owner, do not have to be the writer or the creator, but you do have to be the producer. And you know what I mean by that, right? You're the one that's trying to, to achieve your business objectives, so you have to direct these outside writers or staff writers, but you don't have to do the creation. So educate yourself first, and then get into the process of, of becoming a content creation organization. So when you are a small business and you are limited with resources, what are some of the best ways to get started and really making sure that you're creating stuff that hits the mark as, as efficiently as possible? I think for a small business person right now, the first thing I would do starting out today is build up uh, my social networks around Facebook, Twitter, wherever your prospects are, and start seeing the type of content that's being shared in your arena, in your industry. Start sharing it yourself, build up a following, and then you, but it's crucial at some point, because the content creators are the one that gets all the ultimate benefits, right? They're the ones who get the business, even if the other people are sharing your content. So that's a way to get started. Uh, seeing what works, what doesn't work, without creating, and then get your feet wet and become, you know, the, the media producer. So, what are some of the things that aren't working today? That maybe they were working years ago, but really aren't doing much for you now. Well, you know, the biggest changes are with Google, and you know, the quality of the content that is going to rank well in search engines. You know, the data still shows that people start looking for product and service information in the search engines. It's not going away. So it's really a higher grade of quality content to get to rank. Another thing that we're really seeing is the rise of visual content, infographics, uh, slide share, all of that kind of stuff. And when I think a lot of small business people, like with the, the concept of a slide deck, can get that. Now you still have to, to work your SEO in. You're going to have to have like a transcript, you know, that goes with it in order to, to make Google happy. But people love visual content, and it's uh, getting to where you can get some decent help getting that kind of stuff produced. When you start thinking about visual, I, and I think about these mobile devices like the iPad and the iPhones that have these really great displays. Yep. So how do you make sure that you create the right kind of content that looks good there? Because a lot of times, people are going to look at you first through the lens of a small or a mobile device and iPad. So how do you create good looking content that really works for that? Yeah, so I think the big key here with mobile is mobile responsive design. Um, which sounds like a big expensive thing, but it's really not. For example, we sell WordPress themes out of the box, mobile responsive. What that means is it, the, the, the design knows what screen it's being viewed on. So if it's on a computer screen, it displays like a normal website. If it's an iPad, it automatically adjusts. And this is less than a hundred buck investment if you use WordPress. So uh, the days of paying a whole bunch for, for web design are over but you got to get the mobile aspect right, and that's becoming industry standard now. Okay, so if you're a uh, small business starting out, haven't done much by way of content marketing, what are the top couple of things that they really should do right out the gate in order to give themselves a real good shot of connecting with customers and prospects today? The key, the number one key to content marketing is the same as marketing 101, which is know who you're trying to talk to, know what their problems are, know what their desires are, know what their frustrations and obstacles are, and then you craft content that addresses each of those things. It's just like marketing and sales, it's just a different context. Um, content is actually, you know, it's more effective because people don't realize they've entered the sales process, but they have if you're doing it right, so that's the key. You know, with social media, the lines of customer service and marketing are kind of blurring. How does content marketing help in that aspect? Is it helping 
uh, answer questions in addition to give people some information that might turn them into a customer as well? Yeah, that's interesting. I uh, introduced this morning a, a new slide in my presentation that shows the circles of trust is what I call it with social networks at the outside, your general audience coming in, and then inside you've got customers and clients and repeat customers and clients at the very center. And that's the core of your audience. So you're producing content not just to convert people in, but also you know, getting people to repeat purchase or a recurring uh, subscription or something like that. That's the holy grail. Yeah. So your content marketing is inside the house as well as outside the house. And that's important for people to realize. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that, but you're right. It's like you're creating advocates too. And the more content you create, the stronger the relationship is with the customers. It keeps them there and actually gives them a chance to advocate on your behalf. You're literally empowering them to market for you. And that's what it's all about. Now the last question, this is the toughest one. Which Prince song is your favorite? Oh man, you know, I brought this up. We're gonna argue about the top five Prince songs. Now you're gonna make me choose one? I gotta, I, pick one. I don't know, it's gotta be something off 1999 because that was a catalyst. I, I, that's as close as I'm gonna get. <laughs> well, I know, I'm pretty sure people probably do, but just in case. Where can they learn more or find more information out about what you're up to? Okay, so Copy Blogger, of course, is a starting point. You know, we publish five, six days a week with free information. Uh, we've got a free 20 part course to get you started. If you're just getting started with content marketing, it's on the homepage. So that's where I would get started. Um, and But we're we'll, glad to see you there. Sounds good. We're going to get ready to start talking about print, so you, you guys better go away. It's serious discussion. <laughs>